There we go. Another switch. That looks like an original switch because it's got these kind of connectors on it. I have no idea what it goes to. But I'd say whatever it goes to is pretty well shot. You can see it's split wide open there. Probably not good. Of course, these were wired for 24 volt. And I'm running a 12 volt system in here now, so a lot of this is going to have to get redone. I can't see or find fuses in it. This is the main line coming from the battery right here. That one. But, uh, be fun project. Welcome to Grandfather's Ventures and Projects. We're going to look at uh, rewiring Mellow Yellow. In this episode, uh, actually going to make the determination that we need a wiring harness. Uh, wires are pretty bad shape, dried out. They're 71 years old. And um, this will take a look at those, and then it'll take a look at the wiring harness we got, and how we're going to start uh, putting this thing together. So I got lights. Well, you can see what we're looking at there. This Jeep has actually been converted to start and run on 12 volt. Um, you see the toggle switches there that actually are uh, part of your ignition system, the push button to start it, uh, the switch in the middle that uh, must have been a light switch of some kind at one time. Uh, not sure. That's what was taken out in the uh, opening frames there. Uh, so here's where I'm actually take, taking that piece and loosening it up so I can get it out. We're missing the fuel gauge on there, as you can see. That's gone. The uh, upper right-hand gauge is your ammeter, and um, that uh, ends up, we're going to have to replace that. We'll find that out when we get that thing opened up. It's, uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting project. I was trying to save, the, you can see the hole there right by the steering wheel. That's where the original uh, uh, military light switch went the one they used for years and that has the blackout uh, switch system. I was going to try and utilize that switch but um, we'll get it out of there and take a look at it and see if that's uh, going to be a possibility or not all right next we're going to remove all the screws that hold in what actually are the dash lights those uh, black covers there cover red glass lights in there with actually pretty big bulbs in it that uh, light up the gauges through the back indirectly. And then the center one on the bottom where you see kind of a little hole directly below the speedometer, that's where red light shines through. That's your indicator light for the high beams. And uh, uh, I'm trying to get that all loosened up so when I pull that dash cover off of their uh, gauge panel that I can actually get at all that and get it apart. Okay, we're going to get this gauge panel off of here, and uh, when I had it off earlier, I already disconnected the uh, cable to the speedometer, so, but we still have uh, the capillary tube from the temperature gauge, that's hooked up, and we also have direct uh, line from the oil pressure. So I'm trying to get those lights out that I unscrewed. are in the back so must be that they light the things from the back side what it actually has is uh, some 
windows in the back up there by the the panel in the back of the gauge that allows the light to shine in there. Yeah, that's all. Looks like there's a light in there. That's actually the yeah. turns out to be the indicator light and it's red just like uh, the other stuff once we got it all cleaned up. Same size bulb and everything as the others with just a little hole in the front to let the light through. I don't think that works anymore. The wires are really brittle. There's a bunch of them cut off. Um, it's really kind of a mess. It's been rewired multiple times, I'm sure. We got kind of a tangled mess in there and trying to figure out how to get all this stuff out of here. Bread tie in here. That'll work. Oh wait, that's not a bread tie. That's the wire. Yeah, I'd say that one. Looks like it might have almost started on fire. Maybe it did. Okay, so we got a blue wire. Oh, that's that blue wire. It's in the battery box. It doesn't go to nothing. Huh. Okay. Tracing all these wires here, found out that nothing was fused. The heavy-duty wire coming from the uh, alternator to the amp meter and then back out to the battery, uh, that wasn't fused at all. Uh, this was definitely with uh, all these bad wires and stuff in there, uh, an opportunity for a fire hazard. So we're going to go check out the wires on the other side of the uh, uh, firewall now and do some tracing and see if, uh, see if there's anything worth saving yet. I found some information uh, primarily about the heavy duty switch that's in there and the plug that goes on the back. These all have letters on them for the wire and it tells uh, where they're supposed to go, what they're supposed to turn on. So I did a lot of checking on those and actually uh, did some tracing on it. Many of the wires look like they might do but as you started to work with them at all, if you took any, uh, uh, when you moved them around too much, uh, the, the, the stuff would just start uh, to break off. The insulation was not much good. So it didn't take much time of uh, testing here, and I just decided that, okay, we got to do something different, um, and went out and did some shopping for a particular harness that might work on this, on this Jeep. Well, I did research on several harnesses. The one I decided on is a 555-10411 universal wiring harness 14 circuit with fuse block come from JEGS and I'm kinda excited about trying to put this thing in there um, I also bought a Apache small a sealed box that black box there I'm gonna use that as a fuse box so I can mount my uh, uh, fuse panel and that on the engine side of the firewall and not have to climb around under the dash well we checked it out looks like metal yellow needs a new wiring system so if you want to see how that goes in and uh, how we're doing that to be the subject of 
uh, starting out anyway with the next video. So thank you for watching and hope to see you uh, next time. Take care.